Call Laura now. 1-855-40-LAURA. Are you ready to stand in what you believe in? We won in Wisconsin. We showed that fighting and winning for the hardworking taxpayers can make a difference. They want a fighter. They don't want someone that's going to fight just for the sake of fighting. They want someone who's going to fight and win every single day for the hardworking taxpayers. That's exactly what we need in this country going forward. That was back at his CPAC speech uh, earlier this year. Scott Walker, the governor of the great state of Wisconsin. I'm here in Minnesota looking out on beautiful Lake Minnetonka, not too far away. Uh, from the governor's uh, stomping ground, he joins us now here on the Laura Ingram Show, a candidate for the presidency uh, with a lot going on out there, not only in the polls, but uh, international domestic policy. Governor Walker, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the show. How are you? Thanks for having me back on. I'm doing well, and yourself? I'm doing uh, very well. It's a beautiful day in the Midwest, and uh, and it was, it was fun to hear that you were coming on the show. I, I You know, there bunch of new polls out. We don't live and die by the polls, but they're kind of instant snapshots. And two weeks ago, you were leading in uh, Iowa, and you had a decent margin. Today, you're down. You've dropped to third place. Trump is up at 22, Carson at 14, you're at nine. What's happened? Oh, I think, well, as you mentioned, polls are snapshots. I used to run track, small town I grew up in, and ran the half mile. And there are always some folks that ran out a little bit ahead in the end. Uh, the, the way I run, went, ran and won the races was by making sure I was in, in the first place when it came around to the finish line, which matters the most. But I, I think you see with both of those two, and even with the numbers across the country, uh, across the country, I should say, with Carly moving up, I think there's a common thread there, and that is that people are so frustrated with Washington, particularly with even Republicans in Washington. Remember, a lot of folks said, "Hey, we know we have the House, but we don't have the Senate." Republicans said, give us the Senate and we'll repeal Obamacare. Give us the Senate, we'll take on the president. And I hear when I'm out around the country in state after state that people are frustrated saying, where's the bill to repeal Obamacare? Where? Why is the Iran deal going forward? Why haven't they done anything about that, Frank? You go down the list. And so I think it is a logical, natural reaction to say, we're going to gravitate towards outspoken folks who who've never run for office before or haven't held office before as a reaction to send a message to the politicians in Washington. My hope would be that people would, would say, see, uh, that, that I share that sentiment. That's why I came in in 2010 and not just took on the Democrats. I took on my own party establishment and many in the Capitol who didn't want to change the status quo. And fundamentally transformed our state from a conservative point of view. We fought, we won, we got results, and we did it without compromising. Now, with uh, the rise of the celebrity candidate, uh, Donald Trump, and I know, you don't, you know you're you someone who doesn't dwell on Trump, which I think is, is smart, um, but nevertheless, you know, the country, we've become kind of an infotainment country where substance and, and serious issues get sidelined for the latest spat on social media. Um, but nevertheless, Showmanship and charisma does matter in politics. Uh, so, how does Scott Walker? You're kind of a sober guy, or a straight shooter, but you know you're not uh, you're not going to you know be on stage spinning tops and 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 juggling fire. <laughs> so, so how do you use your more even-handed personality uh, as an asset in this in this very crowded field with someone like Trump in it? How do you, how do you emerge with the charisma that you need to build a movement that you need? I think it's consistency and in, in rising to the occasion at certain moments. I, I think the consistency is that that over time uh, people are going to realize that with some candidates you're going to you're going to get. Uh, one factor from the others, you're going to get consistent statements, actions, beliefs. And I think for us, the biggest thing I can do to break through all that is is to remind folks, if you want someone who does more than just fight, more than just gets angry, someone who can fight and win, not just win three elections in four years in a blue state, but win in terms of look at in a blue state like Wisconsin, we've got almost every common sense concern reform. We didn't just take on the unions. We didn't just do right to work. We did pro-life legislation. Mm -hmm. We defunded Planned Parenthood. We did Castle Dax so and concealed carry. We, do did, it, we did right? it all. Consistent. Yeah, we did it all. Okay. We, we did it without compromising. I mean, I think that's that's the key. Is that so many people who are gravitating towards non-office holders, I think, are doing so because they want to send a message to all the candidates in the race that you better mean it. You better do something about it. And I guess for me, the way to break through is just consistently come back and say. Past actions are pretty good 
pretty good preview as to well, what someone would do as president, and we've done it, and we're going to do it. Yesterday, I had a couple of your friends on. I had um, I had Rand Paul and I had Chris Christie on the show, and Rand Paul comes on the show, and I like him very much. We come on the show, and you know he continued to swing at Trump, okay, and and that's fine. That's what he's decided to do. Chris Christie comes on, and he took on Bush. He took on Jeb, Jeb's recent comments about the Iraq war, basically saying relitigating the Iraq war in 2016 is just a loser strategy. Chris Christie makes news across the country uh, for that, because I think that touches uh, the ner- a nerve for people who think, God bless the Bushes, nice people, but we, that is just going to get killed in, in a Hillary matchup. When is Scott Walker going to start taking on the GOP policy failures that drove Barack Obama into office and continues to infuriate so much of the base when it comes to a Boehner or McConnell. Are we going to see that from you in this next debate? And 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 maybe give us some sense of where you're going to go with that. Yeah, well, twofold. One, you're going to see some of that more than just in the next day. You're going to see it in the next week. When we talk about Obamacare, everybody talks about repealing it. We're going to talk about how we repeal it, what, how we put power back in the hands of patients and, and their families and how we get it done right off the bat uh, with a new president in the next legislative yeah, session. Yeah, but Jeb, Jeb thing and people about. will say that. Jeb, the, Jeb and, and No, 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 Christy, but I'm, what but I'm saying is what part, part of how we're going to do is next Tuesday I'm going to give a speech in the fine state you're in in Minnesota. And in fact, we're going to talk about our strategy of how we get it done, how we push the Congress to go beyond just saying it and getting it done. But in the larger context, you talk about picking fights. I mean, we this week, instead of picking fights with fellow Republicans, I, we picked a fight with Hillary Clinton. She came out with this ridiculous plan. Um, you know, student loan debt is, is a real issue, no doubt about it. i got two kids in college. I know all about it. But feeding the bees, putting more money, more taxpayers' money at the federal and state level into a system that's broken is not the answer. And she went out and attacked me because of things we said. We pointed out, hey, you know, while, while we were freezing tuition for in-state uh, students in Wisconsin four years in a row, first time that's ever been done. She was charging $225,000 per speech for colleges across America. On average, that could have paid off seven student loans out there. So yeah. who's really fighting uh, to help college students and their families afford a good college education? It's not by pouring more taxpayers' money in. It's by keeping the cost down first. But I, I want to have those fights with Hillary Clinton. I want to have those contrasts out there. Because yeah. Hillary Clinton would be worse than this president. I got it. Scott Walker here on the Laura Ingram Show. Uh, I'd love to keep uh, the conversation going, but we have a hard break, unfortunately. Maybe the governor will stand by with us. Uh, if not, we'll talk to him next time. Take a break. You made the right choice. The High Desert's right choice for talk. Talk 960.